that between the trees, the predators and the prey. Every two to four years, Sitka spruce produce a bumper crop of cones, attracting vast numbers of seed-eating birds. Huge flocks of hungry crossbills arrive from as far away as Russia, and using their specially adapted beaks to lever open the cones, they extract the seeds. Many birds benefit from the bonanza. Resident cold tits and visiting siskins are just two, and crossbills and siskins may sometimes outnumber the commonest birds, chaffinches and goldcrests. Though food is abundant in modern forests, nest sites for hole dwellers may not be, so the Forestry Commission put up nest boxes, but have no control over who uses them. Surprisingly, red squirrels flourish in Sitka spruce and these forests are now one of their most important habitats left in Britain. The lack of broad-leaved trees in many conifer forests may exclude the larger grey squirrels, so the reds can benefit from the seed crop with little competition. Conifer forests are not as stable a habitat as broad-leaved woodland, but in summer and winter, the trees still provide food and shelter for many species, and they also have their own dark richness and quiet beauty. Winter is a tough time for wildlife, but the snow can be deceptive. During good cone years, the harvest of seed may last six months, and, encouraged by so much food, crossbills may start to breed in the autumn and continue throughout the winter, raising their young in the sheltered canopy. When the Sitka seed crop is followed by the harvest of larch, Norway spruce and Scots pine, all seed eaters can benefit in surroundings that may seem barren and desolate. Breeding of most species usually peaks in the spring, at a time when crossbills are in full song and displaying goshawks cry excitedly. Male and female goshawks cavort above their chosen nest site, reasserting last year's bonds with flashy aerobatics. Pairs seem to use the same breeding area year after year, and sympathetic foresters protect these nest sites from felling and disturbance. Mature stands of spruce and larch provide suitable nest sites, but larch is preferred. Its brittle branches are easier to break and make large, secure nests.
The male does most of the nest building. He also has to hunt and defend the territory, for the female must increase her weight by a quarter before laying. As her waistline expands, she becomes inefficient as a hunter and finally ceases altogether, spending all her time around the nest. Males shed their white undertail coverts just before mating. The male must now catch all the pair's food, and red squirrels, busy with their own courtship, are vulnerable to attack. They too need food, and the eggs and young of ground nesting birds would make a welcome feast. Woodcock, sitting tight, rely on superb camouflage to avoid detection. The woodcock has just hatched her clutch of eggs, and though the young cannot yet fly, they walk within moments, so the female is able to shepherd her fragile chicks away from danger. Confined to the nest by her precious clutch of eggs, the female goshawk takes advantage of the abundant food and enforced inactivity to molt and grow new feathers, a useful supply of nest lining for wrens. When evening falls, other hunters emerge from their hideouts deep in the forest. There are many badgers in conifer forests, for the steep, well-drained banks under the trees are ideal for their subterranean homes. Like their cousins in the southern oak woods, they pad out at dusk, searching for beetles in the conifer needles and earthworms in the grassy rides at the edge of the forest. They also travel to clearings in the forest to raid field vole nests, a favorite prey of another nocturnal hunter, the tawny owl. Scientists from the Forestry Commission, Steve Petty and David Anderson, are measuring the owl's population density and breeding success to find out how birds of prey adapt to changes in forest management. In any long-term study, it's important to know which birds are which, so individuals are ringed, weighed and measured. Steve and David can then tell how long a bird lives, how far it moves and its breeding success and this information helps foresters manage their areas for wildlife. It's exactly the same in the left wing. Oh, and she's 268 uh, wing length uh, flat and uh, 258 wing length bowed. 
Got that. Tawny owl breeding success varies dramatically with the abundance of prey. So by providing a patchwork of different aged trees, foresters improve the owl's chances of successful hunting and breeding. At night, good hearing is probably more valuable than good eyesight. And with soft flight feathers, tawny owls move silently, like large moths. Technology for the next millennium. With Vector from Vauxhall. Tell me one good thing about your bank. There's no standing in queues. First Direct, 24-hour telephone banking. Government will soon be selling shares in rail track. To register for a prospectus, simply call one of the many banks, building societies, or stockbrokers offering a share shop service. See the list in the national press. Please! Henry, Molly, time for your flea control. I wonder if it's the spray again. Maybe it's the powder. Or perhaps it's the shampoo. What's this? It's Program, an easy and convenient flea control, available only on prescription from your vet. Here, Molly. It's simple. One dose once a month in their food stops fleas breeding. Don't wait until they start scratching. Ask your vet about Program now. That was easy. Late April dawns echo to the extraordinary sounds of the rare capacale, the giant grass of the ancient pine forest that's equally at home in modern spruce. The male kappa is an impressive bird, and it's his intention to make the most of it. On these traditional display grounds, each male is determined to attract females.
This is a competitive arena, for each male must defend his particular stamping ground against rivals while trying to mate with the hens. The Scottish cappers were once hunted to extinction, but in 1837 were successfully reintroduced. Now they're in trouble again, and their sad decline is a mystery. Paradoxically, the cappers in this spruce forest are doing well, and researchers are hoping to discover why, so that other forests can be managed to encourage their recovery. In the meantime, each male is keen to ensure that he is the one to secure a future for the species. Female cappers occasionally fall prey to goshawks. Even the massive males have been taken, though only by the larger female goshawks. Wet weather at hatching time is a much more serious threat to capper than goshawks, but the real cause of decline remains a mystery. Goshawks have been studied since their colonization of the spruce forests in the early 70s and Steve and David now have files on many individuals, including this pair. The molting of flight feathers during nesting allows identification of each individual, for feather pattern, colour and length are as unique as human fingerprints. Right, I'll just have a check in the book to see uh, uh, whether it's the same female or not, I hope it is. This feather confirms oh, yeah. that the female has nested for seven years, raising 20 young, evidence of a flourishing forest, for the presence of top predators like the goshawk reflects the health of the whole environment. Timber production is usually a major objective in commercial plantations, but in these forests for the future, the management objectives are much wider and include nature conservation. One of the Forestry Commission's recent successes has been to encourage the re-establishment of a healthy population of the once extinct goshawk. And at this nest, in a tall larch tree, the chicks have just hatched.
young chicks need feeding regularly, and with the female on guard at the nest, it's the male's duty to bring home food. In this case, a young wood pigeon, a favorite prey. The female is considerably larger than the male and dominates proceedings at the nest. She tears off small strips of meat and for such a powerful bird feeds the chicks with great gentleness. Not so long ago, this nest might have been under threat from timber extraction. But sites of wildlife interest are now identified by scientists and rangers, and stands of nesting trees are left well beyond their normal felling age of around 50 years. Such old-growth forests are good for all wildlife, as well as for goshawks. Sitka spruce is an excellent commercial tree, producing good pulp and building timber. It also grows fast on what is often marginal land in a hostile, unyielding climate. The wet uplands of Britain provide some of the best conditions for tree growing in Europe. Planted in the wrong place, conifers destroy valuable wildlife habitat. Planted in the right place, they create habitat and produce a valuable timber crop. And unlike oil and coal, it's one that's endlessly renewable. With the destruction of the world's tropical rainforests gathering pace, trees will be increasingly in demand, and they are now being planted on lowland farms taken out of agricultural production as well. Perhaps this will help end the conflict between foresters and conservationists. In the meantime, more sensitive forest management is creating important space for wildlife by providing a patchwork of different aged blocks of timber and benefiting a much wider range of species. Newly planted and restocked areas provide a rank, grassy vegetation much loved by field voles. The vole populations fluctuate on a three to four year cycle. Other creatures are adapted to exploit high numbers when they occur, especially the short-eared owl. During good vole years, six or seven owl chicks may survive. But if the vole population crashes and the adults are unable to find sufficient food, the youngest owls may die. Short-eared owls are not alone in relying on these little rodents. Kestrels hunt them during the day, tawny owls at night with badgers and foxes searching out their nests. It's a wonder there are any left for the goshawks, but they too take their toll. Though goshawks are just as likely to kill a tawny or short-eared owl that is too intent on its hunting.
In areas where rabbits abound, this more substantial meal is favoured. Rabbits are comparatively easy prey for goshawks and provide much needed food for their growing young. The pair's four chicks are now two and a half weeks old and their appetite's insatiable. One chick is a bit of a runt, but with feathers growing rapidly, they should all now survive anything the weather throws at them. And the climate is certainly hostile at times, even in summer. Rain is the lifeblood of growing trees, but in much of northern Europe there are problems from industry's pollution of the atmosphere. Many African migrants rely on man-made forests for summer food and nest sites, but conifers collect pollutants from the air on their needles, the notorious acid rain, which can become concentrated in forest streams. Water quality is improved by leaving stream sides clear of conifers and planting small groups of broad-leaved trees such as oak, rowan and birch. The leaf litter of birches is alkaline, reducing the acidity created by man's industrial activity. As a consequence, aquatic insects multiply and insect-eating birds flourish. Colourful grey wagtails are returning to once barren waterways, competing for space with those favourites of fast-running streams, the dipper. Both species nest in streamside banks. The dipper's young have already fledged and are eager for their meal of aquatic larvae gathered from below the surface. The stream sides and forest edges are often the richest places for wildlife, so are good places for hawks which hunt here. If you receive a tax return form and require more information about self-assessment, then get in shape and phone for more details. With BT, how much is a five-minute call to London during the day? Two pounds, David. Sixty pounds. Eight pounds. Seventy pounds. 
of a one eighty. The actual cost is just forty nine p or less with one of BT's discount packages. That's very reasonable. That's unbelievable. That's fair, isn't it? Good. That's cheap. That's all right. No, that's very oh, good. Yes. I very good. It's very cheap. It's not going to much to do with the price of fish. BT's discount packages could save you even more. Call free phone 0800 100 444. Most leading engineers are very secretive about what inspires them to build a better car in the future. And the engineers analyzing this new Accord have every reason to be secretive, because they didn't build the car. Honda did. The new Accord from Honda, as others are finding out, it's built without compromise. So what's the new about them? Well, they made them thicker and softer. But why? Can you? No. New Kleenex for family tissues. Because they're softer and thicker, we've had to make the box bigger. <laughs> Don't take risks. Stick with Solvite. Every time you start your car from cold, it takes a while for your engine to get full protection from its oil. Metal grinds against metal. The damage is permanent. Castrol GTX Magnatec works differently. Unique polarized molecules cling like a magnet, dramatically reducing engine wear. Protect from the moment you turn the key with GTX Magnatec, the new oil from Castrol. Sparrowhawks are like miniature goshawks. They too are agile hunters of the forest glades, and this male must provide all the food for the growing young. A good spruce cone crop provides a bonanza of seed-eating crossbills and siskins, making life easy for bird-eating sparrowhawks. The female is considerably larger than the male, so he avoids visiting the nest and calls her to his plucking post. Size difference between the sexes allows the food resources of the forest to be used efficiently. Small male sparrowhawks take mainly small birds. Females take large prey, like thrushes and even wood pigeons. Wood pigeons are also a favorite prey of goshawks, though they are seldom able to catch them in a straight chase. The element of surprise is essential. To enhance this element of surprise, goshawks use the cover provided by the forest edge. The rest is sheer speed, agility and power.
the forest edge provides a home for other, better known rabbit hunters. Foxes are quite at home in conifer plantations. The large areas of cover providing security and ample food for cubs. But that food doesn't include inquisitive roe deer. Though playful cubs are charming, the occasional adult foxes that venture into adjoining farmland to kill lambs are controlled. But in among the trees, foxes are actually beneficial, eating many field voles and grey squirrels, both of which cause damage by gnawing the bark of young trees. Shooting actually has little effect on fox populations in the forest. What regulates their numbers and breeding success are the periodic crashes in field vole populations, all part of a cycle that maintains the balance between many predators and prey. After three and a half weeks, it's clear the goshawks are finding plenty of prey. The four young have survived and are well feathered in preparation for flight. They're also aggressive at meal times. Such competition is unnecessary. The adults bring in a succession of crows, magpies and jays. Open areas are left to create a varied habitat, good hunting places for goshawks. They're also popular with roe deer. Twins are quite normal for roe deer, but being selective browsers of broadleaf trees, Deer can seriously damage the forest. In past centuries, man has removed the deer's natural predators, the wolf and lynx, so foresters occasionally have to control deer numbers. Most so-called pest species are left to find a natural balance within the forest, and a healthy population of goshawks helps achieve this. After more than five weeks in the nest, the goshawk chicks have scrambled out, eager to be first to the food. But both adults seem keen the chicks should learn to fly, and the male teases them into mobility.
This aggressive scramble strengthens not just wings, but legs and claws, so vital to a goshawk's future role as champion hunter of the forest. The plucking posts around which all this activity is centered are known to other opportunists. Foxes scavenge at goshawk nest sites throughout the year for their good places to find scraps of food. Such opportunism will be vital to this youngster's progress. But just like the fox, the goshawk's future will ultimately depend on man. For it's man who creates the forest habitats that allow the webs of dependence between predator and prey to flourish. It's also man who poses the greatest threat. For despite legal protection throughout the year, persecution of goshawks is widespread and their increase in Britain severely handicapped. The main problems arise in late summer when young goshawks disperse from their nest sites to explore the surrounding woodlands and fields. By leaving the protection of the forest, they may come into contact with man. This well-wooded countryside favored by goshawks is also popular with sportsmen and game rearing is widespread. Autumn concentrations of pheasants at release pens are a tempting target for hungry goshawks and young birds that find these pens can pose a real problem. Goshawks are skilled at disappearing but if they keep returning, a conflict might arise, and despite the law, goshawks could be killed. The goshawk is one of the few bird species to have been successfully reintroduced to Britain after extinction. There's a risk that persecution will drive it out again. In countries like Sweden, where goshawks are common, problem birds are trapped alive and taken away from pheasant pens. Released on the forest edge, in areas where other prey are common, they will have little impact on game stocks. By allowing the relocation of problem birds, perhaps the conflict between sportsmen and protectionists could be turned to cooperation. Both are conservationists with a strong common interest, the need to maintain rich wildlife habitats. Here in the conifer forests of Britain, there has been success in integrating wildlife conservation with the harvesting of a renewable resource. 
It's a partnership that works. Red deer live in harmony with other interests. Goshawks too. Tangible proof that the enlightened foresters of today can create a future for the wildlife of tomorrow. But conifer forests are a living paradox. In the wrong place, they're unwelcome. In the right place, a creation of value. Modern foresters don't need condemnation. They need encouragement. Conifers look dull, but are dynamic, constantly changing as the trees grow. A place where both man and wildlife can prosper. And they're cause for celebration, for these forests are home to a very special bird, a rare success story, a creature that has returned from extinction, the goshawk. Kingdoms is moving to a new day and a new time. It can now be seen on Sundays at 7 o'clock from May the 5th.